been working on setting up these servo drives and found it basically almost impossible to use G-code buttons to uh, have a quick stop of some sort without e-stop. Uh, I, I really don't want a fault condition to cause an e-stop condition or an MCU shutdown, you know, kill everything type thing. So what I've done is I've wired each of the drives to a, um, a five channel SSR bank of relays and if any one drive faults it it sends an input right back to the drive to tell it to emergency stop so any one drive faults all four immediately uh, also when a fault finally is registered by g-code buttons uh, it will disable X Y and E and it takes user intervention to allow uh, position enable, uh, position reference enable. So the first four lights is for drive fault and then the last two uh, is, or the, the second to last is X inhibit and the next one is Y inhibit and blue is inhibit enabled I'm sorry, not inhibit enabled but uh, uh, position reference enable is blue and position reference inhibit is pink. So uh, if we look up here, we see our four drives are on. And then I will come down here and I'm gonna force one of these drives to fault. And I just did that. And every single light, except for the last two, and it may be kind of hard to see, but the first four lights are red and the last two lights are pink. And then up here, the drives themselves are in an alarm condition, which that particular alarm means that e-stop uh, is active. So it kills all of them. So if you're doing a command like um, G0X1000, Y1000, F1, extremely slow, right? Take maybe hours to finish. Uh, in that case, the drives are just going to sit here and nothing is going to happen with the printer. It's not going to stop nothing because Clipper is not going to accept any G-code buttons until that, that uh, uh, command that we issued earlier is complete. So it'll just sit here for an hour and the drives will be disabled just like this. They won't do anything. Whatever else is going to go on is going to go on. Um, nothing I can do about that that's just the way Clipper is uh, so I had to kind of just stop the drives outside of Clipper so so now we've we've got a fault condition and if we look down here we also see that our position reference inhibit is lit which means it will not the drives will not accept any pulses it will just ignore them and they will just sit there so uh, in order to clear this now I can get rid of the fault here and the light has gone off but up here our position inhibit is still on and that's on purpose the only way to get rid of that is to press fault reset so if we come back up here and look we have our four green lights indicating there are no faults but our last two lights are pink which means that it will not accept pulses it's in position inhibit right now. So if I go to my my clipper screen here and hit fault reset, now my lights have turned blue. And then if we look um, in our software here for the drive, our position inhibit is now gone. So now we're able to resume again. Um, so this is working pretty good now uh, in terms of fault handling. Um, I'm waiting right now on some pulleys in order to mount the, the uh, servos right to these existing stands with an adapter plate on top. It'll only be temporary uh, to test it and to see how they work. And then if they turn out to be pretty good, I'll go ahead and have 
uh, new stands made that move the motors out of the uh, chamber. Those uh, motors can only, they're rated to I think 40C uh, and I think anything over that you have to start to derate based on uh, how much temperature is above 40C. Uh, so we don't want to keep those in there and I really don't want my steppers in here anyway but we'll you know we'll cross that bridge when we come to it so so for right now I think she's a goat